I think depression, like, it's obviously the definition of it, which is, like, sadness and which, like, interferes with, like, your daily living or whatever. But, like, it feels like you're numb. Like, all of you is just numb. Like, nothing good can happen to you. And, like, when it does, you just don't care. And you just, like, no like everything good happens to you. You just don't care about it. And it's, like, I don't know, you're just, like, empty and, like, nothing can help. And you're, like, focused on death a lot for some reason. Like, yeah. I left before I went to Laurel. It was, like, normal. Um, like, as normal as it can be. It was, like, a lot depressing. or Like, my life wasn't depressing or anything like that. Like, certain aspects of it was, but it was relatively normal. I think, like, what started it... Like, I'm not even really sure what did start it, but, like, a lot of it was, like... I don't know, like self-esteem or something like that, or stuff that like, blam, like people say and stuff like that. And like my home life, like my dad's cool and everything, but it doesn't get very friendly when me and my mom are around each other. And that was like part of it because like she like calls me names and stuff like that, so like it kind of just started to seep in. I think that's like part of it. I don't think that's like all of it. Like I'm not really sure what caused it, but that's like part of it. The day I was sent away, I was like, I don't know, like it was like it started off normally. I paid my friend to like tie my shoe, and then uh, during lunch I like started making like stupid comments or something like that. And then my friend Jessica she flipped out or something like that. And she's like, if you don't. If you don't take that back or you promise me you're not going to do anything, I'm going to go tell the guidance counselor. That's right, the guidance counselor. <laughs> because she knows I don't like talking about, like, my feelings or whatever. And so she walked down, and I, like, I was, like, flipping out. Like, I was, like, really nervous, like, throughout the entire, like, seventh period. And then I got, like, the little blue note came down to the classroom, and I, like, I was, like, like really scared the entire way up to the office and then she was like inside talking to the counselor and um and then they got and then they wouldn't let my dad come get me for some reason so I had to get like wheeled out of the school in a gurney and like taken in an ambulance to Tripoint where I was there for like seven hours and then I got sent to Laurelwood at like 9 30 at night or something like that and I was there for like a week I had a try point. We got like, I got like tested for like stuff like they like a blood test and like a ton of other crap and then they asked, asked like questions and stuff like that. Like they were trying to like sort of find out what was wrong but then to see like how bad it was. And then I like had to be in this room. It was like a pink slip room or something like that and like everything in it was like retractable into the wall so no one could like hurt themselves or others. And, yeah, I was putting in that room, and then I, like, stayed in the same room and watched, like, 50,000 episodes of NCIS. <sighs> and then I ended up getting sent, like, late at night in, like, another gurney in another ambulance, and then wheeled through the hallways, which I didn't like because I was always afraid they were going to drop me. I, we did, at Laurelwood, we did, like, a lot of, like, group therapy, and there was, like, there was like therapy, like psychotherapy, like one-on-one -on -one with your therapist. So, like everyone, like there was like a couple ones on our level that we had to go to. And um, everyone, there was like these levels or whatever, like on the first, like when you first come in, you have to see your doctor before you can like even leave the floor. And then once you get to the first level, like each level you'd get a little more privileges and then like a, late, a later bedtime. And then when you're on like the third level, you can go down to the vending machine which in there it was actually really exciting because you get to leave and end up having to come back though. But we had like school and the teacher was really funny because he was like crazy. And he would teach us the most like irrelevant things. Like we started talking about dinosaurs one day for some reason. And then the next day we talked about like human proportions. And then um, there was art class where we, we had to make something for Halloween because it was like in October. 
and I made, like, we had to make, like, these little tree thingies and put, like, stuff that scares you. Mine had a panda on it. And then we also made, like, we just, like, colored random pictures and stuff. And then we had, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of other stuff we did. Uh, then we'd, like, go down to lunch and breakfast and dinner and stuff. And then we had, we had gym, too, which kind of sucked because we just, like, played random games for, like, 45 minutes and then we went back upstairs. And then there was, like, free, there was, like, community life, which was, like, you just basically hung out with the people in the level. And I was, like, there with, like, the, the team word was, like, filled or something like that, so there was, like, five, six, there was, like, five to seven teenagers, like, in the kid ward. There was, yeah, and then, um, so there was that, and that's basically all we did. Most of it was just, like, therapy and stuff like that. It was there for, like, seven days, and it seemed, like, longer, even though it wasn't, like, it seemed forever. Yeah, like, the people who helped me, though, they were, like, the people in my first period class, and then there was, like, a couple other people. There was, like, one person in my last period class, or my last block class, I should say. And then a lot of, and then the people, like, on the ward actually helped me, because they, like, understand. And, like, you can't expect your friends to know what you're going through, because they don't really know. But, like, they want to help you or something like that. But a lot of people did help me. My life really hasn't, like, it's changed somehow because, like, that's in my past or something like that. And that's something I have to, like, deal with. Like, if people find out or something, like, random people who find out, it's just like, oh, I see. And then, uh, the, not really much has changed, like, at all. Like, it uh, really hasn't. Um, advice, like, I don't even know, like, the only thing that really, like, it's, like, I'm not depressed anymore, but, like, nothing really changed, but the only advice I could say was, like, choose carefully who you tell things to, and, like, that's really bad advice, but, and then, uh, to try to look on the positives, like, I know it's, like, really, really hard, but, like, try not to be thinking about, like, negatives all the time, that doesn't really help much. Thank you.